Before using the tool, please check out the current list of known issues and limitations. You can find it on ae-transfer.com. This is a 3 ds Max scene, from which we need to export a camera and some objects to After Effects. I created several additional objects, placing them in locations where I need to create the 3D layers. This is 5 standard planes and 2 point objects. I placed these objects in a separate layer, so I can quickly hide or unhide them. As we see, the spinning cube overlaps with some planes, so we need to match them. As I use Corona Renderer, I added the Corona Mask Render element, specifying the red channel and corresponding G-Buffer ID of our cube. After that, the scene was rendered and we have two sequences, the main one and the spinning cube mask. Now let's switch to 3ds Max and run a transfer script. Let's select objects we want to export, unhide our layer and double click on it to select the objects. Also select the camera and three light sources. Some of our objects is linked to other animated objects. Please note that all the object links will be lost in After Effects and the layers will have their own keyframes. Therefore, you don't have to export the parent objects if you don't need them. Now add selected objects to the export list by pressing Add Selected button. Let's adjust the global scale. To do it properly, at least one standard plane object should be added to the export list. Select a plane object, one of the closest to a camera throughout the entire animation range. In our case, let's select plane 005. Then click on Select in List button to select this plane in the export list. A resolution value will appear on top of the object section. This is the resolution of a layer that will be created from this plane object in After Effects. Now, taking into account the frame resolution, adjust the global scale until the layer resolution reached the desired value. Please watch the settings chapter of this video to get information about other very useful features of the settings section. Now let's export the objects. The script supports two methods of exporting. Method 1. Creating a JSX script. This method allows to export all objects in the list by generating and saving a JSX script. Click on the Export All button and save a JSX file. Switch to After Effects. If you want to place the objects in the open composition, you need to make it active before running the JSX script. Click on Timeline or Comp Viewer panel to blue border appear on one of them. Then go to File, Scripts, Run Script File menu and run the JSX script. In the Open dialog, you can select a composition to place the objects. This drop-down list displays only compositions that match scene frame resolution and FPS. If you edit at least one standard plane in 3ds Max, you can select a 3D layer type to create planes. Also, some extra features are available that will be applied to all of them. Let's keep the precompose each plane checkbox in checked state. Press OK and the objects will be created. If you need, you can cancel by pressing Ctrl-Z. Now let's apply our cube mask to avoid other layers overlap the cube. We need to duplicate the main sequence layer, then apply the set matte effect to it, specify our mask sequence layer and specify the red channel for the matte. Now the scene is ready for further compositing. Method 2. Copying to Clipboard. Transferring data via Windows Clipboard allows to paste properties data of a single object to an already existing 3D layer. 
Let's say we want to add an extra layer in our scene. Let's create a standard plane near the edge of the spinning cube. and add it to the export list. Then, while it is selected in the viewport, click on Select in List button to select it in the export list. Now we can see its resolution in pixels, and we need to create a composition with the same resolution in After Effects. After that, place it in the main composition, enable 3D attribute, and return to 3ds max. Above the copy to clipboard button, there is the clipboard data section, where you can choose which properties of selected object will be transferred. Let's keep them all checked. With our plane selected in the expert list, click on copy to clipboard button. Then switch to After Effects and select the layer we created. The next step is very important. You need to move the time slider to the start frame of the exported sequence. If it is the zero frame, you can just press home button on a keyboard and then press Ctrl V. The properties have been pasted. You can press U on a keyboard to see keyframes. Adobe After Effects is not an application for 3D modeling. 3D objects that can be created there by standard ways are flat 3D layers only, solids, shapes, nulls, and compositions. Therefore, only these types of layers, in addition to cameras and lights, can be created in After Effects using a transfer script. In short, from a 3ds Max camera object, a camera layer will be created in After Effects. From standard plane, you can choose a solid, rectangle shape or null layer to be created. From light source, a light layer will be created. And from any other 3ds Max object supported by the script, a null layer will be created. A transfer supports all 3ds Max standard camera types, target, free, and physical cameras. It also supports V-Ray physical camera and Corona camera, both with some limitations. For more information, please check out the known issues list on a transfer website. When exporting to JSX, if an exported camera has a target, a two-node camera will be created in After Effects. If it has no target, a one-node camera will be created. When exporting via Clipboard, please make sure you are pasting the data to an appropriate type of a camera layer in After Effects. The following properties of a camera object are allowed to export. When exporting a standard plane object from 3ds Max to JSX, you can choose one of the following 3D layer types to be created in After Effects – solid, rectangle shape or null object. A standard plane object has length and width parameters, so if it will be created as a solid or rectangle shape layer, the size of this layer will match the size of the plane, and its resolution will depend on the global scale parameter. Please note that if you convert the standard plane to an editable poly or mesh object, its length and width parameters will be lost. In this case, a null layer will be created in After Effects. A pivot point offset is taken into account only for standard planes and only when exporting a scene to JSX script. The following properties of a standard plane object are allowed to export. E-Transfer supports all standard, V-Ray and Corona light sources. When exporting to JSX, if a light source in 3ds Max has a target, a sport source will be created in After Effects. If it has no target, a point light will be created. Same is for cameras. When exporting via Clipboard, please make sure you are pasting the data to an appropriate type of a light layer in After Effects. Export Light Intensity checkbox allows you to export the intensity property of light sources. It activates the Light Intensity Multiplier Spinner, where the multiplier for this property value can be set. The following properties of a light source object are allowed to export. 
All other 3DS Max subjects, if they have position, rotation and scale properties, in case of exporting to JSX, will be created as null object layers in After Effects. When a group of objects is adding to the list, the only head dummy object will be added. If you open the group, select objects excluding the head dummy and click the Add Selected button. Every selected object will be added separately. For all 3ds Max objects except cameras, standard planes and lights, only position, rotation and scale properties are allowed to export. The global scale is a simple multiplier applied to those object properties whose units should be expressed in pixels in After Effects, such as position and layer size. In simple terms, this parameter determines how big will be the layers and all distances created in After Effects. Two small global scale values cause image resolution loss in After Effects, two large values excess resolution and inefficient resource usage. Let's take a look at the simple camera animation exported from 3ds Max with different global scale values. In these two compositions, the output resolution is both 800 by 450 pixels. On the left, the global scale value equals 2, and the layer resolution is 160 pixels per side. Due to low resolution of the layer located quite close to a camera, we can see the insufficient image quality. On the right, the global scale parameter is equal to any, and the resolution of the layer is 10 times higher, 1600 pixels per side. The image quality is very high, but taking into account the distance from the camera and the frame resolution, the resolution of this layer is redundant, which may cause wasting memory and CPU resources while you work with the project. And here is how the given compositions look from the top view. Considering the same 800 pixels width in both compositions, you can see the difference well between these two global scale values. To find an optimal size in pixels required for this layer, we need to compare its visual size with the frame resolution. In our case, based on 450 pixels frame height, the layer height of about 500 pixels could be accepted as an optimal value. The closer the layer is to a camera, the bigger should be its resolution, and vice versa. In our scene, we chose plane 005 in frame 134 as closest to the camera, and based on the frame size, we defined its resolution as 1500 pixels per side. To set the global scale for the scene, we need to select this plane in the export list and adjust the global scale parameter until the resolution shown on top of the object section reached the values we defined. The Auto Detect Animation checkbox allows you to reduce the number of keyframes created in After Effects. Here is another simple scene in which we have three planes. The first one is static. The second has animated position and rotation properties. And to the third one, the noise position controller has been assigned. When this checkbox is enabled, static objects without animated properties and moving parents will not have any keyframes. For every animated property, the script will try to detect the start and the end frame of animation, given all parent objects, and keyframes will be created in this range only. If any non-default controller was assigned for any property, keyframes will be created throughout the entire export range. When the checkbox is disabled, keyframes will be created in every frame throughout the entire export range, for every exported property, regardless of any animation. It is recommended to always keep this checkbox enabled. It significantly reduces the amount of exported data, getting rid of useless information. This is especially important when you export many objects with long animation range. The only case when it makes sense to try to disable this checkbox is when you encountered any error or animation mismatch. The Guess Export Range checkbox, when enabled, automatically sets the start and the end frame of the exported range. First, it tries to take these values from the Range option in the Render Setup dialog. If the range is inactive, the values will be taken from the currently active animation range. 
If you need to set the start frame and the end frame values manually, you need to switch this checkbox off. The renderable planes checkbox, when clicked on it, makes all standard planes from the list visible or not for rendering. This may be useful if you are using the standard planes only as references and don't want to render them. This checkbox simply toggles the renderable checkbox in the Object Properties dialog for all planes in the list. Please note that all newly added standard planes will change their renderable value according to this checkbox state. The Export Light Intensity checkbox allows you to export the intensity of light sources. It activates the Light Intensity Multiplier Spinner, where the multiplier for this parameter can be set. The Default Preferences button allows you to set and save your preferences for permanent use. All these settings will be always applied when you run a transfer for the first time in a new scene and when you run the JSX script in After Effects. Please note that in order to change and save these preferences, 3ds Max must be running with administrator privileges. The export list and all the script settings are being saved in the current scene file. Next time you open the scene and run a transfer, you will not have to configure it once again.